Tonight, is Netflix really playing fair with bandwidth? Google reinvents the CAPTCHA, and Spotify lets you see a year in review of all your music. All the embarrassing stuff, too. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 227, for Wednesday, December 3rd, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and an incredible feature called Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Federal Communications Commission Commissioner Ajit Pai has accused Netflix in a letter to CEO Reed Hastings of securing fast lanes for its own content at the expense of competitors and using proprietary caching systems to force Internet service providers to use non-standard equipment. He's asked for a response from Netflix by December 16th. Pai's office provided Ars Technica links to three articles describing Netflix's refusal to join the new streaming video alliance, but no direct sources for the fast lanes claim or the accusation that Netflix changed its streaming protocols to prevent open caching software from working. As an alternative to installing caching systems inside the big ISP networks, Netflix began paying to get direct connections to the networks of Comcast, AT&T, Time Warner Cable, and Verizon. During peak viewing hours, Netflix accounts for around a third of all downstream internet traffic in North America and 9.5% of upstream traffic. That's a lot. Netflix has asked the FCC to force ISPs to provide the connections for free. Amazon's takeout and delivery feature has gone live. We heard about it earlier this month. It's a, it's a real deal now. Pitting the e-commerce giant against services like Seamless and Grubhub within the Amazon local app and website. Takeout and delivery is only live in Seattle, at least for now. It's covering about 20 restaurants for delivery and about 110 restaurants for takeout orders for pickup. The company lets you charge everything to your existing Amazon account, unsurprisingly. The company also recently launched its point-of-sale service, Amazon Local Register, which competes against companies like Square and PayPal with a point-of-sale app and card-reading hardware. So, one might think Amazon could use new connections with these restaurants and other merchants that are part of the delivery network to then convert them to customers to its local register project as well. Well, he wasn't content to stop at Uber. Senator Al Franken has sent a letter to Lyft as well, asking it to detail its privacy practices. Questions include which employees can access consumer data, how training is structured for employees that can access that information, what mechanisms exist to provide oversight of worker activity, how third-party corporations interact with user data. Franken says he expects a response by the end of the year. All right, I am joined now by Anthony Ha, writer at TechCrunch and frequent guest here on TN2. We're going to talk about CAPTCHAs today. Hey, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? When I woke up this morning, I really didn't think that you and I were going to, going to talk about CAPTCHAs. I can say that emphatically. <laughs> and that's how you know it's going to be, it's, it's been a good day. Right, exactly. So CAPTCHAs, of course, are, you know, they're, they're, they're these mechanisms that, that, that we enter after we, you know, set up a uh, an account or something, to basically to prove that we're a human and not a robot. You know, you're right. you're typing in these these letters right. that look kind of yeah. There we go. Uh, whatever that says, <laughs> arch nemeds, whatever. And, you can, but, and as you can tell from yeah, the second one, it can get really really hard to actually figure out what it says. Right. I, you, they're they're in place for a reason, but they end up being kind of a headache for humans and apparently don't even really work that well. So how is Google changing its API? to make CAPTCHAs stronger and keep basically robots out? Well, it's it's kind of counterintuitive, but their their default experience now is actually that you would just go, it would just, you just get a little prompt that says, are you a robot? Um, <laughs> and then you just sort of click, or I guess it says, I'm not a robot. Right, just, right. Yeah, I forget the exact, I'm not a robot. That makes more sense. Um, that's what a robot yes. would say, though. That is what a robot would say. So I think what they're actually, is that's really not the test. That's like, um, I, what they're saying, I think, is that they've basically built this technology in the back end. So based on sort of how you interact with, you know, the whole system, they can kind of tell whether or not you're a robot. So it's not whether or not you're typing in this thing or you're clicking even. It's more just how you're interacting with it. They can tell sort of the difference between a robot and how, how a robot would click on that, I guess, or whatever and log in and how um, a person would. 
Uh, and then there, there, I think there are going to be some cases where they maybe can't tell us certain and for certain, and then they'll, you'll click "I'm not a robot," and there'll still be that kind of text prompt underneath. So it's really a, a, a it's it's quite a few things where human behavior might be different than something that's automated, right? If the seconds or the or the you know portions of seconds between filling in the little spaces are right. perfectly equal, that might seem strange, right? Because humans don't right. exactly work that way. Right. I mean, I do because I'm very efficient. Sure. Like yeah. Well, you're a little robotic, but that's okay. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, okay. So it, it seems like th this is makes sense. Uh, you, you, if you, if you've got CAPTCHA in place, you you want it to be as effective as possible. But it always seems that people who can build this robot technology can get around this stuff. I mean, how long right. until the robots are back? I mean, it seems, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think it, it, it's sort of like, a, not to use sort of probably a cliche, but like, I think it's kind of like an arms race, right? This is sort of the next step. Um, and I think they'll probably, you know, in a year, they might have something else. Or, or again, I mean, part of it is that, you know, they probably look at, they say, this is, you know, this is going to be our front end experience. And they're probably, you know, going to continue do, doing things on the back end to try to make it smarter and smarter so they can tell the difference. All right. Well, in other Google news, uh, USA Today, uh, which is where I read the story this morning, says that uh, Google plans to create versions of its most popular products for uh, basically versions for kids 12 and younger. Sounds right. good on the surface, although I wonder what Google's most popular products are. Right. Well, so I think it's it's definitely, on, on one level, it makes a lot of intuitive sense. On the other, because, you know, there's all this regulation around kids on the internet. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think there's, there's going to be probably some knee-jerk kind of uh, oh no! Like you're like trying to like now market and advertise to uh, to kids, which is you know not something people are going to be excited about. Right. But I, I think you know Google's argument is look, kids are using these products anyway. We might as well just create versions that are you know specifically for them. So the Federal Trade Commission uh, has the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or COPPA, which is designed to protect kids. So Google, I assume, would have to work within whatever framework is already in place. Right. I, th I think that's the case. I mean, I think that applies a little bit less in terms of Google products because it's less, I mean, I'm not a legal expert, but my sense is that, you know, that's, that's the, felt the strongest if you're building like a social network or something where people are sharing personal information, that's maybe it will be less of a big deal, but I'm sure it's something they'll still have to think about. It's just, you know, maybe not as big a deal. I wonder if you could figure out some sort of a captcha that doesn't keep robots out, but it keeps <laughs> kids that are under 12 out so that they're forced to use the kid version of, you know, Google search. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I, I, I have never done this, but, you know, there are certain sites now where you, you have to go and, 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 you know, say that you're 18 or over, right? And and those are not necessarily the most reliable. Um, no. But, yeah. I know, I, <laughs> right. Uh, but, I, yeah, I hear I, you know, about that, too, that yeah, people these, do that. These, well, you know, you've got kids on Facebook, right, that are clearly under the legal age to have a Facebook account. It's not hard to do. Right, I, I just right. wonder I wonder how kids are pretty smart, um, and they love right. to use tools that are designed for uh, anyone older than them, and they're already right. online anyway. I just wonder how right. effective this will be. Yeah, Unless you no, have a Chromebook or something. You have to, yeah, you have to find, I would imagine, the right balance of you have to make it actually genuinely that if you're a kid, this the kid version is what you want to use, and it's not just the dumbed down, boring version of the adult product, because then you'll just try to use the adult product. Um, and the you you know I read the same USA Today article, and I they don't go into a lot of specifics, but I imagine that's going to be the big challenge. If it's just like use this product, it's less good, and your parents can monitor you. Mm -hmm. Kids will try to find a way around it, and they probably will. Well, you know, Android is named after all those desserts. It's like, figure out how to get actual desserts to kids, and they will use the kid <laughs> version of Google. <laughs> that sounds, I mean, yeah, but then Google would have all this negative PR oh, about Oh, I know, and obesity. Yeah. It's, it's, this t it's tricky stuff. No. Uh, yeah, thanks, just... Anthony, for being here. Anthony Ha writes for TechCrunch, and we always love having him here on Tech News tonight. Before you go, Anthony, remind people where they can keep up with you. You can uh, read my articles on TechCrunch.com and follow me on Twitter at Anthony Ha. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. All right, coming up, Spotify is going to let you find out what you listen to most. If you listen to a lot of Spotify music, the answer may surprise you. I love saying that. And Pizza Hut's new menu kind of wants to know what you'll order before you do. But first, let's thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. 
I sing their praises all the time because I've been a Squarespace user for a long, for, for, Gosh, almost a decade now, if you can believe that. I've had lots of different different templates, different designs, and I don't know, I get bored easily. And Squarespace 7 makes getting started and maintaining your site and changing your template and keeping things fresh easier than ever. You can live edit on one screen. You don't have to toggle between site managers and preview modes or stuff of yesteryear. You can preview designs in device mode. That's really important so that you see how your site looks on lots of different devices, tablets, mobile sizes. We've got lots of sizes now. You have access to professional stock photography from Getty Images right within Squarespace. They go for $10 each. That's really, really helpful. Maybe you're putting together a, a very interesting post and you need a, a picture of something and it's like you just don't have that in your own photo library. That's where Getty comes in. Beautiful stuff. Squarespace also has designed category-specific templates that cater to different industries. Squarespace knows... If you're a musician, you might need a, a certain kind of layout. If you if you own a restaurant, you you might want something to to highlight uh, pictures of the dishes, that sort of thing. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels, and you can accept donations as well. And it starts at just eight dollars a month. It includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year as well. It's mobile ready. When you're on the go, you can absolutely keep up with your site with a variety of mobile apps that are on the go extensions, so you can you know, make changes, monitor comments, all that good stuff. And the Note and Blog apps are now on Android. So for all you Android folks, get on the Squarespace train. <laughs> Hosting's included. Squarespace takes care of the hosting and you don't have to worry about it. You can get a two-week trial for free, completely free. No credit card will be asked of you and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T. And you'll get 10% off and you show your support for us. To begin using Squarespace 7, if you're an existing customer, just go to the settings tab and activate all those new features. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of TN2. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Join me, won't you? Spotify has launched an individualized year in review for anybody who uses the service, uses the service a lot, and wants to remember what they were listening to and when and where in 2014. Along with whatever your personalized list says about you, according to Spotify data, there's some interesting stats in here. A majority of people were into Coldplay, Maroon 5, and Frozen. I guess it's the soundtrack for Frozen. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet uh, this year. Pharrell's song Happy, you may have heard of it, had the most shares earlier this year and was also the number one most played song. Verizon launched two distinct LTE networks after it turned on 4G in 2010. Now the company is preparing for a third, but it won't use unused airwaves. Instead, it will use Verizon's old CDMA EVDO systems for PCS spectrum in a gradual phasing out of 3G. Remember when 3G was all the rage? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a slow network now. A Verizon spokesperson tells GigaOM that Verizon is indeed testing LTE on the PCS band, but wouldn't go into specifics on locations or timing for a commercial launch. About 80% of Verizon's mobile data traffic now travels over LTE, but around 40 million of the total devices on the company's networks still only have 2G and 3G radios, so they can't totally get rid of it, but they will. Mozilla has been claiming for over a year that it won't release a version of Firefox for iOS because Apple won't let it use its own web engine, engine rather, on its platform, although that position might be changing. After an internal Mozilla event in Portland today, Firefox release manager Lucas Block tweeted, quote, we need to be where our users are, so we're going to get Firefox on iOS. Mozilla has since officially acknowledged that, yes, it's indeed experimenting with the iOS platform. Now, the way it works is current third-party iOS browsers like Chrome or Opera only operate on iOS because they use Apple's JavaScript and rendering engines, Apple's own. So Mozilla previously offered Firefox Home on iOS, but abandoned that project two years ago. Sounds like they're ready to play ball. Finally, Pizza. Pizza Hut wants to help you order your food subconsciously, and you might say, that's ridiculous, but hear me out. The company is currently testing the world's first subconscious menu, at least in some of its UK locations. I didn't even know Pizza Hut was over there, but okay, they like bad pizza too. Uh, this is all according to the Washington Post. Now, the product is a collaboration between Pizza Hut, the company, and then a Swedish eye-tracking firm called Toby Technology. And its digital menu, it's for in-store eating, shows a diner, a canvas of 20 toppings, where you can build your pizza 
from uh, almost 5,000 combinations based on which toppings that you look at the longest. If you want to start over, you can even glance at a restart button if you're like, I hate the pizza that you chose for me. A representative for Pizza Hut told the Post that the program will help the indecisive orderer and the prolonged menu peruser to cut time and always get it right. The focus of dining can be on the most important part of dining, the enjoyment of eating. I think they want to turn over tables faster, but that's just me. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Please do if you're enjoying yourself with us Monday through Friday. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Tech News Today is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for you morning news-oriented folks. We like to give you both. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.